Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss ferns and some of the basic features of them. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we get into ferns, I just want to take a moment to discuss plants in general and how they alternate between diploid generations and haploid generations. So the diploid generation of a plant is known as the sporophyte, and the haploid generation of a plant is known as the gametophyte. Well, let's start right here in area one of the diagram with a zygote. You should know that a zygote is diploid. So a, a zygote will be created from egg and sperm. And if a zygote is diploid, a zygote marks the beginning of the diploid stage, which we call the sporophyte. Now follow the arrow in this diagram. The zygote will be created and then will divide by mitosis. And when the zygote divides by mitosis, it will grow into what we call the sporophyte. So the sporophyte has the word spore in it. So the sporophyte makes spores, follow the arrow. The sporophyte makes spores through the process of meiosis. And so when, uh, when meiosis creates cells, you should know that those cells will be haploid. So the sporophyte made haploid spores, and often those spores are just released into the air. And so the, when, uh, when the spores are released into the air, some of the spores, when they land, will grow into the female gametophyte. Other spores, when they land, will grow into the male gametophyte. So some spores become the female gametophyte. And in the word gametophyte, you should be able to see the word gamete. So the female gametophyte will create the female gamete, which you should know is the egg. And some of the other spores, when they land on the ground, will grow into the male gametophyte. Again, in the word gametophyte, you can see the word for gamete. So the male gametophyte creates the male gamete, which you should know is sperm. So as we near the end of this cycle, egg and sperm cells are released by the gametophytes. Uh, the female gametophyte creates the egg, and the male gametophyte creates the sperm. And that kind of brings us back to the beginning of this cycle. Sperm and egg will create a diploid zygote, and the process will repeat itself. I hope you'll see this pattern as we go through the fern life cycle near the end of the video. Okay, so now I want to get into the second group of plants that we are learning in this unit, the seedless and vascular plants. And so the evolutionary advancement in these notes today that we are really focusing on is the evolutionary advancement of a vascular system. In my previous video, when we talked about group one, the seedless and the non-vascular plants, and we really focused on mosses. Mosses are seedless, so are today's plants, ferns. The difference is that mosses do not have a vascular system, but today we're learning about plants that do. And so the advancement of a vascular system allows these plants to grow taller and allows them to transport nutrients to greater heights. There's now a way for water to, to be delivered from the roots to greater heights. There's now a way for glucose that is created through photosynthesis in the leaves to be transported downward to the roots. And so when you look at the mosses, which are non-vascular, no wonder why the mosses are growing so small to the ground and they don't grow very tall. Mosses are non-vascular. They don't have a way to transport nutrients great distances. But ferns, which are going to be representative of the plants we talk about today, can be much taller. And this is because of their vascular system. So another thing to mention is that the plants today, plants today, the seedless and the vascular plants, they reproduce in moist environments. They have sperm cells that have to swim through water. So even though these plants live on land, they have swimming sperm cells that will swim through rainwater. And so a few things about the structure of, of ferns. So uh, ferns have the, a very primitive root system known as rhizoids. And again, they anchor into the soil. They absorb nutrients. The leaves of, of ferns are what, we, are what we call a frond. And fronds have little uh, structures on the underside of them that are going to eventually really spores into the air. And we'll talk more about them in just a moment. 
if we look at this picture right here, here's a fiddle. Now the reason I have a picture of a fiddle in the middle of a plant video, look at the very top, the head of the fiddle. The, the head of the fiddle is curved and curled piece of wood. And so the reason I'm showing this picture is because this right here is a fiddlehead and this is kind of how it gets its name. This is the frond curled up. So ferns, when their fronds are curled up, we call it a fiddlehead. Here's another picture of some fiddleheads. And in this picture, here's some fiddleheads that are uncurling. And they uncurl into the leaves of a fern, which we call a frond. Now on the back side of the frond, we see these little spots, these little patches. We're gonna learn more about these patches in a few moments, but these structures produce spores that will eventually be released into the air. And here's another close-up, here's a, a better close-up of those spore-producing structures on the backside of a frond. So a couple categories before we go into the life cycle I want to mention. Categories of seedless vascular plants. The club mosses, even though they're, they have the word moss in them, they're not true mosses. They were misnamed uh, you know, early in our classification. Uh, turns out club mosses were thought to be mosses, but hey, they're, they're not. They have a vascular system. There are the horsetails, uh, but really the main topic we're going to focus on today in this video are the ferns. So we're going to use ferns to represent the seedless vascular plant. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the life cycle of a fern. Well, here's a picture of some ferns growing outside of a, an apartment complex. And, and anytime you see ferns, what you're looking at is the sporophyte stage. You're looking at the diploid stage of ferns. Anytime you come across them, the sporophyte stage is the diploid stage. So the sporophyte stage is the dominant stage. It's the stage in which ferns are most noticeable. It's the stage in which ferns spend the majority of their existence. So anytime you come across ferns, you're looking at the sporophyte stage, the diploid stage. And so fronds, again, the leaves of a fern are called fronds. Fronds house these structures on them called sori. Now, here's the picture you saw a few moments ago, a couple fiddleheads uncurling into a frond. And once they uncurl, here's a frond, you can see all these little spots, all these little patches. Each patch is what we call a sorus, S-O-R-U-S, sorus. All of them collectively are called sori. So again, here's that picture you saw a moment ago. Each individual sorus contains little structures that produce spores, and that's what sporangia are. Sporangia are the spore-producing structures that are found within each sorus. So a sorus is a cluster of spore-producing structures. It's a cluster of sporangia, and that's what sporangia do. Sporangia make spores. They make spores through the process of meiosis. So spores must be haploid. And once the sporangia create the spores, the spores are simply released into the air. Eventually, the spores will land on the ground and they will grow into the next stage in the life of a fern, the haploid stage called the gametophyte. So once a spore lands on the ground, it grows into the haploid stage known as the gametophyte. Now in this picture, there's a small heart-shaped green leaf in the middle of this picture right here. This is the, uh, the gametophyte stage. Now in ferns, the gametophyte stage is called the prothallus, a heart-shaped leafy structure no bigger than, uh, than, than your fingernail. So the, the prothallus is fairly small. It's very easy not to see, just because uh, it's, again, only about the size of a fingernail. So here's a drawing of a fern's gametophyte, of a fern's prothallus. And there's a few structures I want to show you that exist. So it's got the root structures called the rhizoids. It also has what are called archegonia. These are the female structures, the archegonia. Now, the reason it's called the female structure is because the archegonia produces egg cells. Well, if you notice, there's all those, there's those five or so circular structures at the bottom. These are the male structures. The male structures are called the anthridia. And so the reason they're male structures, 
The reason they're male structures is because they produce sperm. So the archegonium is the female structure that produces eggs, and the anthridium is the male structure that produces sperm. So when you have two uh, gametophytes next to one another, like you see here, or two prothalluses next to each other, like you see right here, eventually sperm will swim from the male structure, sperm will swim from the male anthridium to the female archegonium, where eventually fertilization will take place to make a zygote. Now, in order for the sperm to swim, there has to be rainwater on the ground, which we'll go through in just a moment. But once the sperm and the egg fer uh, fuse together and fertilization occurs, a zygote is created. And the zygote is the beginning of the diploid stage. So the cycle simply repeats itself. But let's look at this in a little more detail. So let's look at this process in a little more detail. So here we have, here we have a, a, a fern, and you, know, you can see the fronds standing up. So spores are released from the sori on the backside of the fronds. So again, here is our adult sporophyte, and in the animation, you see it's releasing a bunch of black dots. Those black dots are representing of, of, of spores. So the spores are just released into the air. Well, let's just follow one spore as it lands on the ground. Well, what's going to happen to this one spore? Now again, spores are haploid, so the spore represents the beginning of the haploid stage called the gametophyte. So that spore is going to grow into that heart-shaped structure called the prothallus. Now again, in reality, I've over-exaggerated the size right here. In reality, the, uh, you know, it's about the size of a fingernail, so it's fairly small. But this heart-shaped structure called the prothallus, this is the fern's gametophyte stage. It's haploid stage. And again, let's not forget there are male structures on it to produce sperm called anthridia. And there are female structures on it to produce eggs called the archegonia. Well, let's just focus on the male anthridia right now because sperm cells are going to swim from the male anthridia to the female archegonia. Now, in order for sperm cells to swim, there needs to be something for them to swim through. So whenever it rains, here it's, it's raining in my animation. So once there's uh, once it's rained and there's some water on the ground. Now watch what happens. Sperm cells can swim from the male anthridia. Well, let's go follow those sperm cells. So the sperm cells can swim from the male anthridia, and here's just one sperm cell finding a female archegonium. And so when sperm and egg come together, again, that's going to create a zygote. So a zygote will be created in the process of fertilization. And a zygote, you should know, is always diploid. So the zygote marks the beginning of the diploid stage, called the sporophyte stage. And so in my picture here, the, the Z stands for zygote. Now again, I've over-exaggerated the size of the zygote here, just so we could see it in my animation. Again, zygotes are microscopic. But again, the zygote marks the beginning of the diploid stage. And so uh, what happens is that zygote will begin to grow. Well, it'll grow upward towards sunlight. And so here we have the sporophyte stage. Here we have the young sporophyte stage still attached, physically attached to the gametophyte stage, also called the prothallus. Now eventually the prothallus, the heart-shaped structure called the prothallus, eventually will just shrivel up and die. And what will remain is the sporophyte state. And as time goes by, you can see a fiddlehead in this picture. As time goes by, the fiddlehead will uncurl into a frond, and, and that'll restart the cycle. Again, now we have the, the, the sperm has reached, the, excuse me, the, the fern. The fern has reached, reached its adult sporophyte stage. And once the fern has reached the adult sporophyte stage, the process simply repeats. The fern, the, the sori that produce spores on the backside of the frond, will release the spores into the air. And those spores will land and start this cycle all over again. So if you're trying this at home, pause the video, pause the video, 
and try to put these steps in order. I've given you the first step. So pause the video, try to put these steps. What comes second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth? I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. So step one, spores will land on, on the ground or in soil. And once that happens, once that happens, a spore will grow into the heart-shaped structure called the prothallus. Remember that the prothallus is the beginning, or excuse me, the prothallus is the gametophyte stage of a fern. Well, after the prothallus grows, what comes third? What comes next? Well, what happens is that sperm will swim through water from the male anthridium to the female archegonium. And once that happens, the next step should be fertilization will occur. Because when sperm swim and fertilize the egg, and there, you, there you go, that's fertilization. So what happens after fertilization occurs? Well, that zygote that is created will grow into a diploid sporophyte. And the final step, once the diploid sporophyte begins to grow, the final step is the sporophyte will release spores, and this process will repeat all over again. So there you go. If you're in my class, you know, pause this video and try to answer these questions, perhaps on a separate sheet of paper. And I'd love to check your answers for accuracy before school or after school one day. So go ahead and pause the video and try to answer these questions right here. Good luck.